Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. Today we explore the wine region known as Chablis. Now it's very common to see the word Chablis on inexpensive wines produced in jug and box wine formats. But are these really Chablis? Well, unfortunately, the word Chablis has been misused, much like Champagne and Burgundy, to prey on the good name and reputation of these iconic wines. Now, true Chablis is a white wine produced in a grape-growing region in Burgundy, France, bearing that exact same name, Chablis. It's northwest of the town of Beaune in Burgundy, and actually, geographically, it's closer to the Champagne region than it is to Burgundy itself. Now, throughout history, in the late 1800s, Chablis had over 100,000 acres under vine, and it acted as the main wine supplier to Paris, France, and it took advantage of barge transportation on the tributaries that fed into the Seine that ultimately went into Paris. At that time, Chablis produced both white wines and red wines. Now, with the rise of the railroads and the phylloxera outbreak in the late 1800s, Chablis found itself on the brink of extinction. In the late 1900s, Chablis reinvented itself completely with a focus on one particular varietal, and that's a hardy Chardonnay that the French call Bonnois, literally meaning the vine from bone. Now in Chablis, there's a constant struggle between cold and ripening. And oftentimes, when Chardonnay is planted in that particular area, it buds early, has problems with early frosts, and has an issue with ripening late. Now, 2019, which is the year we're in today, actually had a very significant event with cold earlier in the month of April. Now, some vintner friends that I know in Chablis have sent me some very stunning pictures of how they controlled the environment and actually saved some of the higher-end Chardonnay plants in that particular area. If you look at these particular pictures, you see that all over the vineyards in Chablis, they actually burned very small straw fires. And what they were trying to do at the time, they were at negative one degree Celsius. Now this was after bud break. So in other words, the the actual vines were, were budding or expanding into green leaves. And so to protect that from the hard freeze, they built these small fires all throughout the vineyards just to raise the temperature two degrees and save the entire crop. So it's very stunning on how just uh, kind of really small, ancient type of, type of acts like building fires can uh, save vineyards and have been used for thousands of years. Now, Chardonnay that's produced in this particular area has a very distinct flavor. Part of it has to do with the climate that it's grown in, but also the soil ha uh, plays a role as well. In this area, we have clay, limestone, and a little bit of chalk that presents the wine with a very uh, nervy, almost steely acidity and presents a full body, but yet acidic and very crisp type of wine. Now in Chablis, the French have set up four different classifications for Chablis wines. The first one is one called Petit Chablis. And Petit Chablis is not a smaller Chablis. It's just a Chablis made of Chardonnay that's a bit more approachable in its early ages. So a Petit Chablis is one that if you're going to dinner tonight and a Chablis would complement that, maybe you're having seafood, go grab a Petit Chablis. It's ready today. Then we move to the next level, which is Chablis AOC, which is Appellation Origine Controlée, which is the French version of recognizing a specific area for its exceptional quality. So Chablis AOC, these wines are oaked very lightly, uh, but still have all the characteristics that we would expect from Chardonnay in this particular area. The top two, rounding out those four, is Premier Cru and also Grand Cru. 
Premier Cru being the second level and Grand Cru being the highest level of quality. So rare and so expensive is Grand Cru Chablis that currently today there are only seven vineyards in all of Chablis that are Grand Cru and a total acreage of 257 acres. So let's go ahead and taste the Chablis and let you know what you can expect from these wines. So today I picked a wine, a Chablis, from the winemaker Antonin Rodet. And this is Rodet's 2015 AOC level Chablis. So looking at the wine itself, we notice that it's very deep gold in its color, uh, very clear in its presentation, really quite pretty. If we swirl to liberate some of the aromas, the aromas that we get out of this particular Chablis are kind of like a cross between Granny Smith apple and a little bit of lemon cream. We can actually smell almost like a where uh, lemon pudding meets creme brulee. It smells uh, tart, but it also smells rich at the same time. Now let's go ahead and taste the wine. Antonin Rodet Chablis uh, approaches the palate with flavors of um, very tart apple, a little bit of lemon that might border slightly on the lime side. Then in mid-palate, you start to feel the acidity kick into the wine. It's very crisp, very refreshing. But, however, on the back side of the palate, we feel the weight of the Chardonnay, the glycerin in the actual wine, kind of weigh down the palate and give it a longer, more lingering finish. So what is the application for a Chablis? Well, depending on whether you're going with Petit Chablis, AOC level Chablis, those are probably uh, wines that you could immediately apply today to any type of seafood, uh, let's say fowl dishes like chicken, uh, they go perfectly with duck. You could even, if you're a white wine lover, have Chardonnay, Chablis with lighter meats, even up into the level of, say, a roasted pork loin. If we get into Premier Cru and Grand Cru level Chablis, they go with everything we just talked about, but because they have a little more oaky persona, they maybe would go with a little bit more savory dishes, dishes done with creams and butter, things of that nature. Well, I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of this Rodez Chablis. Thanks so much for tuning in, and please come back next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time.